Hello and welcome to Crushing Comics. I'm your host, Peter, and we're here with a new show that I like to call Shelve, Store, or Sell. And it's all about those three things exactly. So I have a huge comic book collection, which if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen quite a bit of. But what you haven't seen is the rest of it, what I used to call the stacks. You've seen me move it, actually, from house to house, but you've never seen it opened. And the stacks is about 140 short boxes of just so much stuff. Um, indie stuff, Marvel stuff, DC singles from the 1970s, uh, and, and this, which we're going to get to in a moment. And I haven't seen it since largely 2017 when I moved to New Zealand from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, when I boxed all the stuff up. And so now that I'm in a house that hopefully we're going to be in for more than a year because, oh my lord, I will die if we have to move again in such a short amount of time, I thought maybe it's time to get some of the stuff out and get it on the shelves. I have more shelves than I had in the last house, which I think is something that I've I've not really made clear. That's why I can do this exercise. I had two of these 5 by 5s in the last house. Now I have an additional 4x4, four four, and also I've moved sheet music into another shelving situation, which just freed up a bunch of blocks as well. So the upshot of that is I started out with about 16 free squares of these squares, and now we're already down to 14 and a half, and we're only two boxes in, and there's 140 boxes. So things are gonna have to get a little bit more contentious at some point. This right here is something I've talked about so many times and never brought up on the channel visually, and that is the beginning of my Image Comics singles collection, largely Wildstorm, from the early 90s and forward. So what you need to understand is that Image as we think of it now is not what Image is to people who were buying comic books in the early 90s. Image now is this boutique, uh, high-end, creator-owned place with not a lot of ongoing continuity. Certain parts of it do. Kirkman sometimes has ongoing continuity. Top Cow kind of has its own continuity. Spawn, Savage Dragon, they've continued ever since this point. But when Image started, it was another whole shared universe, and there were the six imprints of the six Image founders, who I won't try to name off the top of my head because I always will miss one, no matter how well I know them. And even though not all their books were together all the time, there was the sense that they did kind of exist in the same world. Now, over time, that splintered because some of the founders, like Rob Liefeld, kind of went off and did their own thing. Some of the founders really only had one big book, like Jim Valentino with Shadowhawk, and once that went away, there wasn't really any more, so they were part of the universe. But the one universe out of the original six that wound up being the most enduring, both in size and length, uh, without, well, it's been rebooted, but let's just say without as many significant reboots as maybe some of the other ones went on to do that were larger, was Wildstorm, which was originated by Jim Lee, but also with his good friend from, I think, childhood, and uh, frequent co-writer, co -writer, Brandon Choi. But there are a lot of other people that we know now as some of our big favorites that started out as part of this Wildstorm explosion. Um, J. Scott Campbell came from Wildstorm, Warren Ellis did a lot of early books for Wildstorm, and so I made it a point of mine, I think in like 2016, before I knew that we were going to move, that I was going to get every Wildstorm comic book. There were spreadsheets. My, my goal was to get them all bound because, so I could have one big shelf of every Wildstorm comic book. And I didn't get to the binding and actually went down to the wire. I, I chased the moving truck away from our house in a story I've told many times, but I swear it's actually true. I chased the moving truck because the last batch of Wildstorm comics came after the truck had been packed to take our stuff to get packed into a shipping container. There are something like 9 to 15 boxes of this, so of course it can't go on the shelves because it would fill all the spots. It'll probably get a little bit more condensed once it's bound, and you better believe that once it's bound, it's all going on the shelves. But I don't know if you're going to see me shelf a lot of this right now because a lot of it's loose singles, and um, I really want to get this binding project underway. Now that like we're in, settled in a house and I'm settled into a, a new career move that I'm really enjoying, I really do want to get back to the binding. But let's see what's in the darn box, shall we? Okay. So, first up is Aphrodite X. So this is hilariously not actually Wildstorm after all of that buildup. I I collect an amount of Top Cow, and the Top Cow that I do, Top Cow was uh, Mark Silvestri's imprint, 
And the top cow that I collect is basically top cow that somehow connects directly to a Cyber Force series. Which even if top cow's entire universe is like semi-shared at different points, not everything about top cow really does tie in directly. And even if like Witchblade somewhat kind of exists in the same universe as top, um, Cyber Force, I don't know if it does. I I'm not gonna. Go I'm not going all in on Witchblade and the Darkness. I'm happy to read those digitally. But things that directly relate to Cyber Force, I do pick up. And so this is all actually pretty modern Aphrodite, um, actually it's not X, actually Aphrodite 9, and then ninth generation. Uh, so that's at the front of the box. And actually, somewhere around here I have another one of these that needs to squeeze into this, so I actually need to be aware of that, that I have some, like, random comics places that, um, could get filed better. So, sorry, anticlimactic, not Wildstorm. Oh, yeah. Speed, yeah. A lot of not Wildstorm stuff at the beginning. This is Ash. I'm gonna get this out for you. Ash was a creator-owned comic from uh, Joe Quesada, who would later go on to be Marvel's, what, editor-in-chief? And I actually, some of these are from my original 90s collection. Um, possibly this one right here. So this is Ash. He was like a super-powered firefighter, I want to say? Joe Quesada and Jimmy Palmiotti. Pagliotti, too, uh, who you probably now know from writing Harley Quinn with his partner, Amanda Connor. Uh, Quesada was, I mean, the reason I got it was his art was just so dynamic at the time. He had just come off of, I knew him from drawing X Factor briefly. And so I just was like, wow, so cool that he's doing his own series with his own creator, owned hero, even though it wasn't part of a big shared universe like Wildstorm. So it was from this imprint called Event Comics. But it was a big deal when it launched at the time because people really liked him. And it even got one of these um, wizard half issues, which this is absolutely from my original connection, collection. I did not have to chase this one down. So when I was putting together this, this is not even image, and I know I told you it was going to be a box of image, and I'm a dirty liar. But um, when I was putting together this Wildstorm stuff, I also made a list of like, are there a few other independent 90s comics that I, as I'm chasing down this wild stuff to bind, might like to bind. And this is like a perfect size for a bind. I mean, I don't know, it's like 15, 16 issues, and I just think it would be cool to bind it. I would have the only, I mean, I'm sure other people have done something similar to this, but in terms of the exact choices that I make and the specific issues that I pulled for it, I would be the only person who had a bound copy of Ash. I think that's so cool. Uh, okay, let's do this next. Maybe we'll get a real Wildstorm book. Nope! <laughs> so, I, I'm sorry I'm such a liar. This is Asylum. What is it? I don't even know what it is. It's from Extreme Press, or no, Maximum Press, which is when um, Leafield struck out on his own because the image people, if I remember correctly, had had enough of him. And, uh, God, and here's a random Kid Supreme in there. That's... Oh, I guess it's Kid Supreme in Asylum? I don't know. I I did a really good job of putting all of this together right before we moved. I, I mean, I was supposed to be, like, packing up our whole life, and then after I would do that for the whole day, I would, like, go up to the attic and just methodically go through these boxes and make sure everything was taped up, so I can assure you this is what's supposed to be in this bag. Why do I have it? I don't know. Is that is that profit on the cover? Maybe. Everybody drawn by Leafield in the mid '90s looked like that. Uh, I do just have, I do have some Leafield stuff. I was thinking about going all in on uh, Maximum Press and Extreme Studios, and it got down to like the last month. We knew we were moving, and I was like, "Am I gonna get everything from Ev Evangeline?" She's like, "Evangeline." She's like, "I some angel or something." I don't know. Just got a sword. She doesn't wear any clothes, and I actually had it in my eBay cart. Like, I'm doing it, and then I was like, "Am I ever gonna read this?" I think the reason I have this is because it ties into a thing which ties into a thing which has um, Glory in it. And I do like Glory. She was one of the characters I was really into from that. But I decided I wasn't going to do everything. Maybe now I, I, I later decide that I do want to. But anyway, that's Asylum. So next is finally one that you will recognize, which is Authority. And you'll notice these are not single issues. This is um, the original Warren Ellis and Mark Miller run on the authority and this was the best way to easily get it. I was thinking about getting singles, but like my these are hardcovers with with dust jackets. My binds are going to look like this anyway. So I was like, well, I mean, actually it won't look like this cuz it's got a beautiful wrapped cover art on really glossy paper. But 
my point is my stuff is going to be about the size and shape of this. So rather than get some somewhat pricey floppies for the authority, I was like, you know what? These, these books exist. They're on in stock trades. Let's just do it. Um, the authority is an outgrowth of Stormwatch, which is my favorite, probably, with, with some competition. It's my favorite Wildstorm title. So S Wildstorm started out as Wildcats and Stormwatch, as I've explained on this channel before, and although maybe you didn't see that. And, uh, and Wildcats was sort of like the X-Men-ish book, and Stormwatch was more of the Avengers e book because it was like a UN group and they were meant to peacekeep all around the Earth, but things pretty much go poorly for them from their very first <laughs> adventure. And, uh, and eventually Warren Ellis takes over and he totally deconstructs them and he turns it from Stormwatch into the Authority. And the Authority is what really gets popular with characters like Jenny Sparks and Midnighter. And it actually becomes, as far as I know, the more enduring brand. It's it's much more enduring than the Stormwatch brand, even though DC brought back Stormwatch for New 52. So, if, and and basically, it kind of went back and forth over the years. There were some more Stormwatches, but there were also more authorities. And I have all of it. This was one of those things that it took me down to the wire to get all of. Some of them I got in trade paperbacks because why collect things floppies that I have to collect when I don't have to, but then some of it is in floppy. And I got it all. This goes all the way up to World's End, which is when DC basically said, sorry, there's no more runway left for these Wildstorm characters that we've been publishing, which at the time was only a few. It was like Authority, uh, Wildcats, and Gen 13, and then wrapped it up. Oh, but wait, I have more. <laughs> and then some more. And then actually I, I found that same thing, Authority Prime collected, so I bought it collected. And then I also have, oh my gosh, even more. These are all Authority tie-ins. So there's Authority when it crossed over with Planetary, one of my favorite books. There's Jenny Sparks. I guess I should like take each one of these out, right? So there's um, Jenny Sparks with the secret history of the Authority. There's... There's uh, the Authority Kev, I've always, you know, Kev, that great brand, Kev. There's the uh, the Authority Earth, Inferno, and Other Stories, the Authority Human on the Inside, the Authority Magnificent Kevin, Kevin's back, the Mathar Authority A Man Called Kev, and I do love this one, an Authority crossover with Lobo, which is called Holiday Hell. This actually also has some other content in it, I think, other than just the Lobo story. So, um, so that's why this box, as it turns out, is only labeled A, because it was mostly, <laughs> after we got past that, non-Wildstorm stuff, mostly authority. Can I tell you a secret? Okay. I've, I've never read any authority comic books. This is now an ASMR channel. I've never read any authority comic books because I've read Stormwatch and I was in the process of accumulating all these so I can do my big Wildstorm read. And I started that Wildstorm read at the end of 2016 because I had all the first year of Wildstorm. Like I had always had that. I was collecting comics at that time. And then I started hunting for all this other stuff. And then within a year, um, you know, this turned into that we were moving to another country. And so I paused that read as, as that kind of began and other things were happening in life, and then we moved here. So I still want to do a whole Wildstorm read, but you know, there's only so many hours in the day, and part of me is like, I kind of want to get it all bound first, because I think that'd be a really cool reading experience. And then part of me is like, oh my gosh, Peter, you're going to be all gray hair by the time you get it all bound. Maybe you just read it first and then bind it. So we'll see. But you've basically just seen here on this desk and in this box, I, every authority comic book that exists. It is all here. There's nothing missing. I chased down every one. I have it all perfectly laid out in reading order. But we haven't seen Stormwatch yet. And that'll be some other time because we're at the end of this box. So luckily for my shelves, there's no shelving to do from this box right now because this is all going to go back in a weight binding. But at some point, all this will be bound. And I can't imagine it's going to get much, much tighter packed than this. I mean, I guess there's backing boards in this. And backing boards are almost as thick as a comic, maybe like half as thick as a comic. So maybe we'll get this down to like half this much. That's that's exciting. But it's gonna it's going on a shelf. I'll buy more shelves. I mean, I I could cram in another um, two by four shelf here, not like a two by four, like two by four, uh, and that could just be the Wildstorm section of the library. So it's gonna happen. Um, thanks for tuning in to me unpacking the third of about ish 140 
boxes, so this is gonna be going on for a while. Uh, if you have specific things you're excited to find out if I own or not, or you have any comments, or if you think this name shall store or sell could be better and not as much of a tongue twister, I am so interested in your feedback. Uh, so please leave it below, and please tune in next time for more from Crutching Comics.